Hey guys, this is Jake with Cohesive Friendship Unit, and today we have the opportunity to take an early look at Dreamscaper Prologue. This is the first chapter of the upcoming game Dreamscaper, developed by Afterburner Studios and self-published. Before we get started with our first look into Dreamscaper, just to note that we did receive this review copy of Dreamscaper for free from the developer, but as always, our thoughts and opinions are entirely our own. And additionally, I want to take another moment to thank everyone for helping us reach our sub goal of 2250 subs. We are super excited with the progress we're making and it means a lot to us to have your support. And we are happy that you stopped by to check out our channel and our content. Now, let's dive in to Dreamscaper Prologue. So what is Dreamscaper? Dreamscaper is an indie action roguelike game developed by Afterburner Studios. This is the first game they've ever developed. They were formed by three developers with past experience in big AAA titles such as Gears 5 and Paragon. Specifically, um, some of the environment art comes from a previous artist who worked on Gears 5, which we all know is a beautiful, um, stunning game. So that carries through to this game. The visuals are amazing, and we will go into some more examples of those. If you are interested in checking out Dreamscaper Prologue that will release on April 8th for free, you can upgrade to the, the Supporters Edition, which will give you an extra two levels, tons more content, and then the full game is slated to release in summer 2020, and the price tag on that is yet to be determined. Starting out with the look and feel of the game, as I mentioned, the artist on this game has past experience in some big AAA titles such as Gears 5, so it is no surprise that the art and the environment in this game are absolutely beautiful. The character models are great, very surprising for an indie game of this size, and it's really on display, especially in the overworld, where you are constantly interacting with characters to uh, unlock things and progress the story. It's amazing to see the amount of detail and the expressiveness of each character in that overworld and in the locations of the overworld as well. They are very detailed, very cozy, and they feel like you are really in a location. I, I love what they did with that. My only complaint with the overall progression right now is there it feels kind of just like a wrapper on top of a menu. The, the look is great, but what you're doing there is very basic. I'd like to see them flesh out the areas, flesh out what you can do, what your choices are. Uh, right now, you kind of just go and you talk to every person you can, give them random gifts, and that's it. I'd like to see a little more options, a little more thought put into how we actually progress that overworld content because one of the biggest parts of a roguelike is obviously the outside game loop progression and right now I think it's a little bit lacking I love the items that you can get but I'd like to see them put a little more thought and effort into how we go about unlocking those things now hopping into the core gameplay loop of Dreamscaper, leaving the overworld behind for a second and talking about the ever important core gameplay to this roguelike. We hop into Cassie's dreams, which the environments from the overworld carry in very nicely, are beautiful in the dream world, and the visual effects for your items and your abilities are amazing in this game as well. They add a ton of detail to the story and really tie in what you're doing into the theme of hopping into Cassie's dreams for the core gameplay here. The runs for this game are very different from any roguelike I've ever played. They feel very uh, decision-oriented, very deliberate in what you're doing. You don't get swarmed very often in this game, which I'm not sure if that was a design decision or if there is still some work to be done here but you are very often just fighting one, maybe two enemies at a time, and the time to kill on these enemies is very long. I originally was not a fan of this approach, but as I unlocked more weapons, got further in, I started to get a little more hooked. So I, I like what they're doing here. I'd like to see them continue on that, but I would like to see the time to kill reduced because it can take a long, long time, and it is no fun to sit there for 
legitimately 10, 20, 30 seconds trying to kill an enemy, especially early on in the game when you don't have any good weapons unlocked, it can really, really ruin the fun to just sit there and try and beat an enemy down with unarmed while you're doing this run. So I'd like to see that time to kill reduced. I would like to see a little bit more enemy swarming. I don't think that was a design decision. It seems like the enemy uh, or radius is not large enough, especially for how small these levels are. I'd like to see a little more um, enemy engagement to emphasize the movement, which I think is actually very good, especially as you progress further and get more dodges and movement abilities. Uh, I'd like to see that highlighted more and add a little more enemy swarming. The enemies themselves are very good. I think the visuals need a little bit of fleshing out to differentiate the enemies. They are very similar. Their abilities are um, very white, blue, purple. They are all very similar, so it's kind of hard to tell the difference. I think one of the staples of good roguelikes is very easy to distinguish enemies. Um, since these games are generally fast-paced, it is good design to have these enemies very differentiable while you're doing a run. I think these enemies are not as easy to tell apart as you would like. The um, moves are not as telegraphed as I would have hoped. I will say the enemies in Chapter 2, once you progress from hometown and move on to the city, are much better. Uh, I think there's a lot more variety there, and the moves are much different. So that gives me a lot of hope for the final release of this game, because I'm seeing some good enemy variety in the Supporter Edition content. Um, and I especially like the uh, samurai enemy that... Um, comes in. So I, I like what they're doing here. I like the enemies. Um, the hometown content I think is a little slow, but once you progress into the city content, if you end up going that direction, is very good and I really, really like the enemies in there. The bosses that we encounter, there's two bosses in prologue right now, hometown boss and city boss. The boss design is pretty good. Uh, my only complaint with the bosses is the music gets really loud, so I'd like them to tone down the boss music a little bit. I understand um, music volume builds hype, but uh, it also can be uh, a little ear bleedy at times. So I'd like to tone down the boss music, but the boss fights are great. Um, they did a fantastic job with those, and I do like the city boss here as well. Um, I've gone through the hometown boss fight probably a dozen plus times, and it, uh, it's getting pretty easy, I will admit. You can kind of bomb rush these enemies and drop 10 bombs and burn them down pretty quickly. So that may be something that we need to look at in the future, but I do like the content. I think the bosses hold up pretty well, and they do scale pretty well as you progress through the game. Now the final thing I want to touch on with Dreamscaper Prologue is the music itself. I kind of regret leaving this to the end of the video, but uh, better late than never. The music is uh, written and composed by Dal North, which you can go check him out. He's done a lot of video game music in the past, and he did an amazing job with this game. The music is beautiful for this game. I love it. Um, it's very chill, very laid back. It fits very well in with the theme of what they're trying to do with this game. Uh, I'll play a little bit at the end of this video so that you can hear more of it, but the, the music alone I think is enough to make this game worthwhile to check out, especially since Prologue is entirely free. I absolutely love the music. The audio effects for this game though I think are a little lacking. Um, it. I'm not sure if it's just overtaken by the soundtrack itself or if they need a little more work on the audio cues for enemy attacks, for your attacks, abilities, that kind of thing. There are a couple of uh, magic abilities that have very good audio to them, but overall I, I felt like there was some lacking um, audio design here. I'd like to see more. Um, I'd like to see more effects for all the weapons that really help to differentiate them. So to wrap things up with our first look at Dreamscaper Prologue, my overall thoughts for this game, I really like what they've done here. This is a great first entry into the gaming realm for Afterburner Studios. The visuals and the music for this game are amazing, and I think they are good enough to carry this game on their own merits, but luckily for them, the gameplay is pretty good as well. Um, I originally was not super into 
the core gameplay loop of the runs, I thought the time to kill for enemies was a little too high and the weapon variety was not enough. But as I started to play more and progress further, and especially once I started to get into the city trials of the supporter edition for this game, the weapon variety ended up being great and the weapon, the enemy variety uh, was also great. I love the city enemies and as you unlock more city weapons, they are uh, very diverse. So I, I like that. I am much more interested in the game now that I've gotten a little further and that gives me a lot of hope for the full release of this game. I would like to see the time to kill for these enemies reduced and I would like to see a little more swarming, um, a little more common roguelike gameplay here. I think the combat can be a little slow and a little one-on-one, -on -one, which is not something I'm looking for in a roguelike. So I hope to see some of those updates made to the full release in the summer. If you were interested in checking out Dreamscaper, uh, you can pick up the free Dreamscaper prologue on April 8th. Uh, if you love the game, you can buy the supporter edition, which as I mentioned, will unlock the city trials, which is another two levels onto the game and has a lot more weapon variety, item variety, and more character conversations. So if you were really loving the game, I would recommend checking that out because I really like the content that it added. The full game will drop in summer 2020, and I hope to see some of the updates in here that I mentioned. But overall, I absolutely love the game, and I really recommend picking it up if you have the chance, especially since it is free. If you do, please let me know down in the comments what you think of the game. Um, what your thoughts are for the developers as they are going towards their 1.0 release. And thank you all for sticking through this video. We'll catch you guys next time.